we're gonna go for a very nice one. I think the card is a good response. I just want to say that wild growth onto the Nunu. That is <laughs> that, that's gonna be hilarious. Yeah. And yeah, there we go. They are setting up for a bit of a hyper carry angle. Kaisa is gonna be very comfortable navigating fights because while Nunu doesn't quite enable hyper carry buffs, what Nunu does is he creates an area of zone control where you can't get to the hyper carry. And that's what makes him so good together with the comfort of the Kaisa, with the Lulu. And this is gonna be a bit interesting though, because they've committed to a hyper carry team composition and they've opted to pick up a Yara. So it seems like they can't quite decide which angle they want to go for here. Do we want to play for our hyper carry or do we want to play for our split pressure? They're trying to do a bit of both, and I never like when they try to do that. Look, Omo, I think SSK gave the best quote regarding this. Top lane doesn't matter? Top lane doesn't matter. The game is a 4 versus True. 4. The Shang and Tan X are going to play their own thing. So Gifan yeah. really only have the Fair. 4 left to play for. And so you're looking to make that Kai'Sa the hyper carry in those 4. And I think they can do that against Divine Esports. Issue being, I think the Ziggs is an amazing pickup to shut yep. down Geek Fan. They have so much wave cliff. Yeah, agreed as well. The Ziggs is gonna be quite problematic for them if you try to split push with Fiora. Ziggs doesn't even have to go to your lane, just a super mega death, infernal bomb, whatever it's called, and it blows up the whole wave. You can't do anything anymore. I think that's gonna be a big problem. But what I do not like from Geek Fan's team composition is yes, they're trying to do two things at once, but also I've never seen a less intimidating mid jungle duo than Nunu and Galio. If I'm playing mid lane, I'll just be under your tier 1 tower the whole game because how am I ever going to die? Well, you know, this looks like, uh, this looks like, again, it's going to Divine Esports on the draft, as our analysts have mentioned. Yes, this does look a little uneasy on the side of Geek Fam, but who knows, this, this team might finally have something planned for us as we get into Game 2 of Divine Esports versus Geek Fam. We're going to see if Geek Fam can finally get that very elusive win and uh maybe continue that one 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 <laughs> because everybody's getting the point over here perhaps perhaps geek fan can pull through this time let's find out as we jump into game two casters take it away that's right mika one is the magical number and that's what divine esports possess right here as geek fan will be hoping they can make the same happen themselves we've only had draws so far in group b but tj this is looking like a very different matchup yeah i'll tell you what you talk about geek fam, I'm a geek fan, you know? Oh, that was a spicy turn of words, wasn't this, Kimmy? Yeah, that was uh, an easy setup and a slam dunk to yourself. And I'll tell you why I'm a geek fan. It's because of the Nunu. And this is something that we've seen a little bit of in Wild Rift with the Jarvan occasionally turning towards the jungle. But one of the problems that Wild Rift has is it's really hard to run tanks in this game. Kind of Galio is about the extent of it. You get Galio, you get Gragas, you get Mundo. Those are the beefy boys that can be played in meta right now. And that defines team comps because a lot of teams want to play front to back AD carry compositions, but need to run an enchanter support because none of the tank supports are especially good. Uh, uh, need to run a assassin jungle because none of the, there are no tank jungles, right? You can, you can get Jarvan jungle sometimes and he's a pseudo tank in the late game. So, so it's actually kind of interesting to me that Nuno's coming into the meta. I don't think this is the game they're gonna, that is going to work because Geek Fam have almost no gold. Uh, they have almost no damage. So they're just going to run out of gold very early, not be able to, to contest the lane because it's like Galio, and they're going to lose. But I think it is really interesting that we're seeing a tank in the jungle because it unlocks more front-to-back team fight comps. It unlocks compositions that can have a little bit beefier of a front line. That's really fun. I mean, it is really fun. Uh, we have seen a fair few variations of it already. Um, teams, you know, rocking the fire and ice, looking to try and make everything nice, do it the brand, do it the Nunu, and say, look, on paper, we shouldn't win. Like, there's no way we should be winning this mid-jungle duo, but somehow they found a way. So, uh, no doubt, Geek Fam are looking to try and uh, spice things up here and say, look, I don't oh think we God. can beat you conventionally. Um, look, Nunu is not a champion that's going to be contested. We're going to lock it in second anyway. We're going to reveal our <laughs> cards and say, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, I, I wasn't a giant fan of that. If you, have, if you have a pocket pick that nobody's expecting, save it for your last pick or save You're it inside, until the please. middle of the draft. Yeah. Um, here, is, here is one other thing that's kind of really interesting. This composition that Geek Fam are running is entirely focused around protecting key carries. That's why you run Lulu typically. That's certainly why you run Galio. Um, so looking at the map, what are the key carries? It's Momo, it's the Shang. Already, yeah. here's the focus up top. Yep, in comes the snowball. Headbutts the wall, doesn't even matter. But now Tarnix in a 1v2 situation, trying to buy as much time as he can. Ah, the aggro doesn't switch Did I get a shot. 
Could have been a kill. Will they get the turret? Well, the answer is Divine Esports make it a cross map play and say, you take out our top laner. We'll just remove your dragon lane instead. A beautiful dive executed here by Lin. He's going to pay the price for it as Nyx chased Flash him down Lulu with the lance and then gets a beautiful taunt oh, afterwards. Yeah. And somehow that is the most fed Lulu oh, I've Lord. ever seen in my life. Lulu support on a killing spree with a it triple. It's happening. Pull <laughs> up your hats, gig fam. Up 4 one in the early trading. As after a dominant game one, Divine Esports are caught a little bit asleep at the wheel. And all of those bot lane kills don't matter as much because it's just kills being passed to the Lulu. I don't really know what's gonna what's gonna come from that. Um, but what I will tell you is that the the fact that that trade goes positive for Geek Fat matters a ton because the main purpose of it is to, as I said, direct gold to a carry. The Shang in this case is Geek Fam's major carry. He's easily their best player. He is one of the stars, if not the best player in the Malaysian region. And if they can just give this Fiora so much gold that she can 1v5, then the Shang is the player to execute that strat. So that's the game plan. That's what they're gunning for. And that's why 69 is in here on the top line. Certainly is. Keeps rolling, rolling, Coyote. rolling with that snowball. Hits a two-man knockup, but not before Coyote can rotate through. Says, I could be a jungler, but I'm actually a mid laner doing a jungle roll. Jumps on through, has no cataclysm, and cops an full absolute zero to the head and says, that's cool, I'll just walk away. Or will he? Yes, he will. From okay. one push to another. <laughs> I don't know. So Geek Fam getting, getting some, some access early. And I'm watching the Shang actually recalling as Coyote's kind of prowling. He just went in for the play. He gets the kill on the minimap. Coyote finds the kill. That's actually massive. 69 He's looking for it. The snowball connects. I was wondering if Coyote could try and, uh, you know, juke up the flag and drag. Must but have been on cooldown. Nowhere to turn, nowhere to run. And uh, yeah, I guess he gets his answer back. That's not where you want it to go. That's bad gold. That's garbage gold. That's, that's Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom gold. Because... Mm. All of it's going on to your Yeti boy, who's very cute, but isn't going to be doing damage. This is Tank Nunu. So you you ideally want that gold onto the Shang, and they don't get it. Uh, it it's a positive trade for Devon. You know what I'd love to have seen is uh, Nick say, look, I know I'm the support player. We're not going out and sense. It's not the staff of the Flowing Waters. Just insta buys Ludens with that triple and says, I'm the AP for it now. Be feared. Like, I'm not caring about pocketing you. I'm no, no, here to hit big fat doinks with this little lance. Three, <laughs> three man set up down bottom here. I think the Shang survives it just because it's a real pain to dive a Fiora. We'll see. Look at this Nunu. It's everywhere. I mean, it just keeps coming up into lanes to <laughs> try and smoothing. make the Shang's life as easy as possible. He's moving and he's smoothing. Little Nunu everywhere. Uh, what... <laughs> One of, the, one of the other reasons why I do expect to see a little bit more Nunu in the meta over the next couple of days, over the next couple of weeks, is that Nunu's move speed actually makes him incredibly effective as a support jungler, right? You can see he's in every single lane responding to every single gank. In the same way we talk about Aurelian Soul as kind of a scuffed, twisted fate because of his ability to be anywhere on the map. Coyote with the all-in here, though. Cataclysm goes out, hits the flag. Very well played. Shung just responds, pops a barrier, both pop a summoner. Both just walk away, and Quay says, I can do what this Nunu can. Rocks up a little bit later, but now the Herald will be summoned, and three members, plus the bug, will now try and take on Darius and this turret. Rift Herald will collapse, and this is going to be a, a turret surviving, very likely, but it is no amount of gold passed over to Geek Fam. Uh, it is still kind of cursed gold. It is still kind of... Pirates of the Caribbean gold. Oh, oh dear. what an apprehend. <laughs> Stop it, Tan. Stop it. What was that? The absolute zero. Will it be used? No. That's just a redemption. Okay. okay. So it is still kind of Pirates of the Caribbean gold, uh, cursing you to a life of eternal suffering aboard a pirate ship. But Momo at least gets some of it. So it's a little bit of, of good gold for Geek Fam. If, if Momo can become a late game carry on this Kaiser, which is possible. The, the big problem is this isn't a team composition with a ton of damage. So even though they're doing pretty well right now, they do have a 1k gold lead. Divine are just going to gonna show up in this mid game and be a real pain to deal with for a team that doesn't have the possibility to team fight them even. Question is, uh, you know, will they be patient enough to even wait for that moment? Because uh, Geek Fam have been very resilient, very eager to take down this turret because the Herald wasn't enough. It's uh, slim margins. It's not going to be enough. Oh, mm. Shang in the mid lane. Cops are beating 1v2. 
Get him, Nick. Divine Esports will get the first turret instead. <laughs> and Lyak steps up to the midline to try and take the fight. Unable to. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Divine know what's going on here. Divine, Divine, have, Divine have been around the block, you know? They've seen some things. Sure, sure. They and they look you. at this composition and they say, this is a, this is a hard carry composition. And the Shang's the best player in the Malaysian region. Why don't we just focus the Shang? And they're right, and it's working. Because despite Geek Fam having having a lead right now, you can see they just kind of don't have any damage. Uh, and and a huge part of that is that the Shang is still on his first item. He's still on that Trinity Force. Yeah, he's lagging behind in comparison. Not too much ahead, really, um, of the uh, supports on his team. And as you said, the gold uh, mismatch. I mean, it's not really their fault. The circumstances kind of meant that the gold went those ways of a of a Nunu and a Lulu in that uh, you know crazy fashion, to say the least. Especially with the triple, but. Uh, they need time, and I'm not it's sure if you're going to offer them that time, right? It's just they're, they're saying, this is your win condition, this is what you need to play around. We're going to capitalize on this, and we're running this map by saying, Dragon on spawn, it's ours for the taking. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I mean, the gold right there is is fairy food. It's it's Pan's Labyrinth food. Where Geek Fam are getting the gold, they're eating the food, but they're going to spend their entire life in the labyrinth because they don't have any damage. Look at Momo there. Yeah, Momo's copping a bit of a beating so far, and he's going to get zoned away from this barrel as the dragon is down to 50%. Now, Bearer might be right. used. They're going to try and top them up. No damage spread around. Chomp, Smite could be huge. Will they entertain the idea of a 50-50? No, they won't. <laughs> the dragon gets reset. There's the flash. There's the dash. And there's a wild growth popped very early on onto the Nunu who walks away. Flags and dragons. Oh, I can't even use my absolute zero. I've baited myself. Lens Playground oh, jumps oh, in, oh. finds one, finds two. Oh, it's an dear. Easter egg. It's a surprise. That's gonna be four. And he's found a toy with it. He's sitting on a triple. I'm four. jumping up and down. There's the quadro. Give this man the penta. Oh, wait, no. they're all dead. Never mind. All right. Well. King Fam should not have, they had no business fighting that dragon. They don't have any damage. I think that became abundantly clear. And Divine just love it. They say, all right, step up, show us what you got. We're just gonna keep poking, don't mind us. We've got a, we got a Zig, so he's just gonna keep throwing bombs in. You can stand here awkwardly right next to the dragon while the dragon ships away at you and the Zigs throws bombs in. And we'll live our best life. We're thriving over here, doing our skincare routines. Waiting for you guys to get bored the second it looks like Geek Fam might want to turn around and run away. They throw the Mega Inferno Bomb, send Len in to clean up. Just Len versus the world. I mean, it just seems so criminal to me when you've got a composition built with all these bodyguards to say you are not allowed to make things like that happen. You're in a choke spot. I mean, it should be so easy in theory, right? For the, the polymorphs, for the absolute zero, for the hero's entrance, to knock you up, disrupt your flow, and prevent you. Uh, from leaping around, having so much fun, like it is hopscotch, but that's not the case here. And Divine deploys straight back into this map. Now with a healthy gold lead, six k to talk about dirty. Look at the damage from the Mega Inferno bomb. Hope one deletes him out of the game. That's a Galio. That's a tank, but not anymore. Yeah, and this should be a Baron over to Divine. Shang recognizes what's going on on the map. He's just farming on the opposite side. That's what you've got to do in order to come back into this game. Geek Fam can't really contest. Hungry Nunu, absolute zero and uh, zero damage. That's a little bit sad to see. Uh, got to fall on down, dropped by the guillotine. Says hello, the Baron is the bait. Back to back now, Geek Fam have taken fights where they're baited by the objective. Divine Esports yeah. don't care about it. They just want to bring you in and it's always working for them. It's, it's, it's hard to play these games because you need to be in a mindset where you're like, okay, we can't win this fight. We just need to sit back and lose and try and lose slowly for long enough that the other team makes a mistake. And nine times out of ten in professional playing, nobody's going to make a mistake. But especially, you know, this is, a, this is a lesson that you can map onto your solo queue gameplay because people do make a ton of mistakes in solo queue gameplay. If you just sit back, let the other team get those objectives, lose slowly, Someone will hand you something eventually, and you can turn the game around. And that's what Geek Fam need to be doing. Because stepping up to 5v5 by the team that has this much of a gold lead on you is just insane. You're never going to win. But do you believe in the no. Kaiser 1v9? Have you seen this prophecy unleashed before? Because I certainly haven't, because Lens jumped in. He's stolen the blue buff. He's onto the key target. Oh, nice dear. flash! Credit where credit is due. 69 delivers. And out comes Haki, looking to try and split apart this fight, realizing that's not where I want to be. Flash away, satchel charge won't connect, and Geek Fam are trying to put a plaster on a broken uh, broken bone. Sure, I think that's an approved medical procedure, though. Red team lost a turret. In this case? 
and if this isn't an approved medical procedure. Whatever's happening here is not helping the patient. Yep, the vitals aren't looking too good in this one. They're not looking healthy, and they're certainly not looking happy. Down 10,000 gold. They've been in the spot before. Game one was a 13-minute shellacking, and it's looking to be the exact same here this time around. Bear in mind, they had the Baron buff. They hit the squeeze. Three inhibitors fell on down. The Divine Esports taking their time this time around. Not going to be as haphazard and commanding, but they are still looking for the end goal.